Hey everyone, welcome to the Weave Lounge. This is episode four of The Day I Became a God. And if it wasn't for some vast differences or whatever, I would have swore this was an episode of Saki. If this episode teaches me anything, one life lesson is that if you can do it in Uno, you can do it anywhere. I mean, really, it's if, if Uno allows it, you can do it. Um, this is a weird episode. It, it was very enjoyable, but this is weird. It, it starts off looking at old hacker guy, okay? He's sitting there in that dingy house looking at some computers trying to dig up some information. And apparently they tried to drag someone who did a thesis with this other guy they're investigating just about some kind of technology. I mean, they're rambling off, they really are. But basically the CEO of a company set up a fake partition or sublet of their company to lure this guy in for an interview while the hacker listens in on it. Okay, basically what they're trying to do is that CEO has employed the hacker kid and he's sitting there trying to get as much information as he can out of this whatever research it is that they're doing and spills the only the two two little notions two little notions one the guy that wrote the original thesis who has apparently disappeared or something he has a family nobody knew he had a family so he has a family so there's some connections somewhere to get some more information and two this person who wrote this thesis had some kind of obsession with a philosophy on love now that might sound melodramatic or just, you know, the guy was emotional or something, but you got to take it with this anime, okay? Remember, the same guy that did Angel Beats in Charlotte, okay? That's, there's a lot of romance and love and all that stuff intertwined, but it's never done normally. So this guy, this is going to lead to something, like, probably big, and it's probably going to just, like, crisscross at the apex of this story. So... <sighs> I don't know what to think of it. I really don't know what to think of it. There's, it's going to probably be like this guy did some kind of study of uncovered that maybe he can draw some kind of mathematical equation out of emotions themselves. And who knows what happened? Who knows where that goes? Hopefully we'll find out in a few more episodes. But other than that serious tone, the only other one is the Mahjong Tournament. It's... Okay. Okay, this is, this, this, this is just dumb. So there's this lady named Kako Tengen, okay? She is a television lawyer personality kind of person, right? And apparently a very big fan of Mahjong and is hosting this tournament. Well, Yoda's sitting out there watching TV and she comes across, and apparently Yoda has, you know, some pretty good attraction towards this very young, very beautiful, very smart, lawyer personality on TV. That's a little outside the norm, but whatever floats your boat, that's fine. And Odin is like, oh, okay, we're gonna do something about that. So while Yoda is like sitting in his room studying and everything, Odin is laying on his bed, just tapping away at an online Mahjong tournament using Yoda's name. And Odin, of course, wins the whole thing. And what does this do? She won this whole online tournament in Yoda's name. Yoda has no idea how to play Mahjong, and yet this qualified him to go to the tournament <laughs> that Kako Tengen, the lawyer girl, is hosting, so that basically Yoda can meet her. <sighs> Look, I don't know a damn thing about Mahjong. I really don't. I remember I watched the first season of Saki and I was like, okay, yeah, this seems like an interesting game to try. I really do want to just, you know, try this out. I, I, I don't know, I know nothing about it. But even though not knowing anything about Mahjong, this is hilarious. This is absolutely, it, it's, it comes across as asinine, even though I don't know, don't know what's asinine about it. That's how good they pulled this off, okay? Okay, so, Yoda has to go to this tournament, and in Mahjong or whatever, it's him, three other people, you know, playing on each side of a square, right? And you have all these tiles all over the place. I don't know what any of these tiles do. I really don't. 
But apparently it's like a liberal tournament, which kind of indicates it's not, there's rules, of course, but I guess you can bend them a little or get creative. It's, it's something weird. The other three players that Yoda's up against are strict pros, okay? They're, they're not fooling around. They're, they're playing to win, whatever. Yoda just learned how to play two days ago. He, the, she, remember, Odin won the tournament, Hina, Odin, Odin, Hina, won the tournament in his name, online, without Yoda knowing, and then told him he's gonna go meet the lawyer girl at a Mahjong tournament. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets a real, real quick crash course. And of course, Odin is telling him all these really, really stupid rules that aren't really rules. Uh, oh my God. Like her philosophy, and I just mentioned it, is if Uno allows it, you can do it. So there's times when he skips his turn. I don't think in Mahjong you're supposed to be able to skip your turn. Uh, he reversed it once. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be able to do that either. Um, I was waiting for like the draw four card to come up or something. You know, it's, <sighs> the, it was just asking. He's taking these symbols, like there's some symbols that mean like east, west, north, south. And he gets them all and he, he, he like throws them to the side, yells compass and it, it gets awarded points. I don't think that's actually in Mahjong, but he got points for doing it. Um, he called it compass. I know that's not a thing. That wouldn't be a thing. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be a thing. But in this anime, it's a thing. He makes up a lot of things. Okay, this is supposed to be like liberal or whatever, but what he is essentially doing is just cheating. He's just cheating. And since it's a liberal tournament where they just, you know, kind of allow some stretching of the rules or whatever, he's blatantly cheating and they're letting him get away with it and rewarding him points. This is a great tournament. <laughs> As it goes on, it just gets more and more ludicrous. The other three players have no idea what they're doing. And eventually, you know, Yoda, the first couple of rounds or whatever, you know, he's he's like negative points. Okay, he, he's getting whooped. He don't know what the heck he's doing. But, <laughs> oh my God. He, he eventually starts coming back at points by basically cheating. And of course he ends up winning it. And this is all by Odin's design. It, it, worked, it worked out perfectly, apparently. So he ends up winning. But here's the weird thing, okay? Miss Lawyer Girl uh, Kako Tengen, she's maybe a little out there or maybe a little too engrossed in Mahjong, all right? Now, after the match, they do a little interview and everything, and the, the other three professional guys that he was playing with, they're, they're like, they're dead to the world. They don't know what happened. Their mind is fried. It, nothing, you know. Nothing. It, 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 it's a nothing. This game should have literally been a nothing. It's it's it, it was gross. And anyone that plays mahjong like seriously or a pro, they will see this and be like, "What is wrong with the world?" Everything in that box was wrong with the world. And he, they even asked one seasoned professional mahjong commentator, "What are your comments?" And he's just like, "No comment. <laughs> he, he ain't getting in on this. He's not going there." Smart guy. I mean, I wouldn't either, but damn. But what this ends up doing is Odin actually set Yoda up to play this way and win, but it does it in such a way that old lawyer girl is just smitten with Yoda. Okay, this is this is a older, very beautiful lawyer, TV personality lady, and. Next thing you know, she sits down to Yoda and she's all up in his stuff. She is like, come to my room. We about to do the tiles or whatever the hell. Company, the infinite, the infinite re reach or whatever. She's about to infinitely reach somewhere. That's what she's about to do. Now, if that was me, I would be like, we got to go, go now. But in a good way, the, the way with her, Yoda, on the other hand, is, this is, he's starting to come off a tad bit pathetic. I mean, you know, I, I know he, he, he likes old girl, the old emotionless girl. I know he likes her. And that's, he's, he's basically saying, I, I have a crush. I can't go and turns lawyer chick down. That's dumb. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, and, and so he, he, 
actually has to run away from her because she gets like all real mad and everything and sends her bodyguard after him to go beat him up and tears like his suit that he borrowed from his dad apart without that the dad know. the dad doesn't know the suit's gone and it's ripped now it's ruined he's he ain't gonna be very happy about this probably happy he won the tournament but if there wasn't a cash prize it's not gonna be worth it in the end but uh I'll admit, he, he comes out and he like Odin and his buddies all there and everything. He's like, so how did it work? And Odin knew what she was doing. She was trying to get him hooked up with the lawyer chick. And Odin had it down perfect. And Yoda didn't. He just didn't. And old, old girl, she, you know, old emotionless girl. I, I should just start calling her Rei Ayanami. Because, so, you know, half the time I can't remember her name anyways. Because I don't, I actually don't like that character. At least not now. Her character could evolve. But, yeah, she's she ain't even there. She's gone. Didn't even wait for Yoda. I mean, even if even if they're just, like, so-so friends, wait for the guy. I mean, just be like, hey, congratulations, I'm going home now. You know, at least something. She just bailed. What, what does he see in her? You know, yeah, she's beautiful and everything, but other than that, she's like... It's, She's like a semi truck stalled on the side of the road. It ain't going nowhere, and the load ain't going anywhere either. If you keep going after it, that's a bad analogy. I don't know how I came up with that, but you guys can just ignore it. All right, with that, like, like, subscribe, hit that notification button. I really don't know where this is going in the next episode. I'm thinking they're going to develop the whole hacker angle a little bit more. Uh, Yoda is just—he needs to buy a clue, and apparently. He's only got 13 days until the world ends before he can afford one, so we'll see you in the next video.